Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is special digits and it is a hard level problem. So I believe that the label is hard but it is on the easier side of the hard difficulty range. So I would say it is an easy hard level problem and uh, the problem statement is that we have been given 5 integers n, a, b, c and d. Right? So we have to like uh, let they are giving us some definitions first. They say that all integers of length n having only a and b in their decimal representation are called good integers. Right? So any number n of length n which is having only a and b is a good name, good integer. Right? Among all those integers, all those integers will have which have the sum of digits containing only c and d are called best integers. Right? So I'll explain you this particular thing, this number test case first. And also after we have computed the number of best integers, we have to output it like modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7. So this is that, that what we have to compute. We have to find the number of best integers. So let me just copy this whole thing. And uh, here we have it. So it says n for n is equal to 2. That means there will be two digits in the number. Now the numbers can be like we can only use a and b. In this case, a is 1 and b is 2. But let me show you a more general case. So it can be a a, a b, b a and b b. These are the only four configurations possible. Right. Now, uh, in this case, it is 1 and 2. So all the only good integers are 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1 and 2, 1. Right. So these are, this will be corresponding to a a, a b, b a and e b. So if I write it in this manner, so it will be 1, 1 like this. The second one will be 1, 2. The third one will be 2, 1 and the fourth one will be 2, 2. So these are the good integers. Now if we take the sum of their uh, like of their digits like 1 plus 1 the sum is 2, 2 plus 1 the sum is 3, 2 plus 1 the sum is 3 and 2 plus 2 the sum is 4. Right. Now we have again two integers c and d. So the sum of the digits should only contain c and d. So this is containing 2. So this is wrong. This is containing 3. This is correct. This is containing 3. This is correct. And this is containing 4. So this is wrong. The sum of the digits can only contain 3 or 5, right? So we have to tell all possible best integers. So these are called like this, uh, this 1, 2 is a best integer and this 2, 1 is a best integer, right? Because the sum of digits only contain 3 or 5. Now we have to tell the total number of best integers for any given value of n, a, b, c and d, right? So how do we solve this problem? First of all, the value of n is up to n to the power 5, right? So we like in this way, we made all the possible combinations. It will not be possible uh, to make all the possible combinations for such huge values. So what we need to do is, for example, let me take a smaller value of n for demonstration. Uh, let me say 5, right? For n is equal to 5, I'll have 5 spaces, right? And like interestingly enough, I have only two integers a and b. So if I say I have zero number of a's, that means I'll have five number of b's. If I say I have one number of a, that means I'll have four number of b's. If I say I have two number of a's, I'll have three number of b's and so on. So at the end, I'll have five a's and zero number of b's, right? Since this total sum is n, I can iterate through this value from 0 to n, right? I can iterate through this value and I can tell the number of a's and the number of p's. With the help of number of a's and number of p's I have in my uh, current number, I can tell the total sum. So for example, uh, if a is uh, 10 and so sorry, it can be only from 0 to 9, right? So if for example, a is uh, 5 and b is 1. So if I have 3 a's and 4 b's, the total sum would be 15 plus 4 that is 19, right? So I can easily calculate the total sum. Now let us check what can be the maximum value of the total sum. So like uh, the maximum value can be when this is like 10 raised to the power 5. Let us assume that the like the number of a's is 10 raised to the power 5 and the number of b's is 0. So in this particular case, the maximum value of a can be uh, 9 and the, the frequency of a can be 10 raised to the power 5. So the total value would be 9 into 10 raised to the power 5. So you see there will be, there will be very few digits in the, in the total sum. So if I know that the number of digits in the total sum is finite, that is only about 5 to 6 digits, 
I can easily check whether it contains C or D or not. Right. Once I get the sum, I can easily check whether it contains C or D or not by just simply traversing through the uh, number as a string or by like taking each value do by doing mod 10. Right. So I can check. So this will be like almost a constant operation to check whether the digit contains three, the number C or D or not, whether the sum contains the digit C or D or not. So we will be able to form the sum by traversing, uh, by going through 0 to n, right. This way we will be able to form the sum. We will be able to check whether the sum contains C or D or not in constant time, right. Now the third problem is, for example, if uh, for this particular value, this approves, right. The value of C was 1 and the value of D was 9, right. So this particular value is okay. That means I can have 3 number of A's and 4 number of B's. Right. So the total total like uh, total sum is 7. Right. So I need 7 places. Right. At some of these places there will be A and some and other other places there will be B. So the total number of like the total configuration which uh, which will have the same total sum will be. Uh, so the total places are 7 and we have 3 number of A's. So 7C3. Or you can also calculate 7C4. It will be the same. It will be the same. So you can calculate 7C3 or so you can calculate 7C4. Why am I doing this? Because there are 7 places. Right. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 places. And I need to place the digit A at 3 of those places. So I can choose any 3 of those places. So the like the total number of possible combinations will be 7C3. Right. Once I choose the places to place A, I can place the remaining uh, B's in the remaining position. Right. So the ordering doesn't matter. That is why we don't take 7P3. We are just we are just concerned about the positions. So that is why we are taking 7C3. So for all the values for which the sum of the digits does not contain any other integer than C and D, I can calculate the value of NCR. Right. And I can add all of these values of NCR. And that will be my final answer. So let me just quickly summarize the uh, solution for you. So we see that uh, since the value of n is 10 to the power 5, what we can do is we can just traverse through uh, all the values of 0 to n and this will be the frequency of any one of the digits. So you, you can either take a or you can take b. So let us assume we are traversing through the frequency of a right from 0 to 10 to uh, 0 to n right. If we know the frequency of A, we would know the frequency of uh, B by N minus frequency of A, right. If we know the frequency of both of them, we can calculate what will be the total sum. For example, the frequency of A is I. So A into I plus B into N minus I will give me the total sum, right. And we have like calculated that the total sum will be around 9 into 10 to the power 5. This is the max total sum that we can have. Even if it is greater than this, the like checking the digits will be a, almost a constant time operation. You just need 7 to 10 operations to check the digits. Right? This is the maximum upper bound. Once you have formed this particular value, that is the total sum. What you can do is, we can check whether it contains C or D or not. Right? This particular total sum should only contain the digits C and D. Right? If it contains only C and D, that means that this is a best integer and we can we know that we need i number of a's so from the total n we need i number of a's so we need to find how in how many ways i can place those i number of a's in the total n places so i'll i'll calculate nci for that particular value and i'll add it to my answer so once i've computed this particular value for all the values of i that will, I will get my final answer. So this was the solution for today's problem of the day. And let me just show you the code now. So what I have done is I have created some global variables called max size, which is 10 to the power 5 plus 10. And I have created a fact, uh, array, which will store the factorial values. And I also created a mod value that is 10 to the power 9 plus 7. Right, so these are the constants that I have created, global constants. So now what I do is I initialize my fact of 0 is equal to fact of 1 at, and it is equal to 1. Now for starting from 2, I am going till n plus 5. So this is some random value greater than n, right? And I am doing fact of i is equal to fact of i minus 1 into i. And I am just taking mod of this particular value, right? So at each position, i 
of or the fact array i will have the factorial of i modulo this particular value mod which is defined earlier right and it is also defined in the question by question so this is the same value now what i do is i initialize my answer with zero and i go through all the values from zero to less than equals to n now i calculate the total sum right and it will be equals to i into a plus n minus i into b now i have my checker function which will check whether this is this value is a best gives a best integer or not so this uh, to give like this value to be a best integer what do we need what do we need we know that it should only contain c and d so i just pass it in the checker function i convert the integer n into string and i just traverse through the string so if it is not equal to c if the current character is not equal to c and it is not equal to d as well i, I can just return false that this is not valid otherwise i can return true right once I know that this is valid, I can calculate the number of ways to place these i number of a's in among the n positions. Right. So I calculate ncr of n comma i. So to calculate the ncr, what I do is I initialize my answer with factorial of n, and I'm taking the modular multiplicative inverse of r and n minus r. So basically, what is the value of uh, ncr? It is equals to ncr. Let me just write it in the comment. Ncr is equals to n factorial divi divided by n minus r factorial into r factorial right this is the value of uh, ncr but since we have to take the whole value uh, in this mod what do we have what do we have to do is we have to take the modular multiplicative inverse of n minus r factorial and r factorial so i am taking the modular multiplicative inverse by raising the power of fact of r up to mod minus 2 right Similarly, I raise the power of fact of n minus r up to mod, mi mod minus 2. Right? I am creating multiple multiplicative inverse for both of these values and I am just multiplying it with factorial of n. Right? And I can just after it, I can return answer mod, this particular value mod. So I, I let me just show, also show you the power function. So this is a simple binary exponentiation function. So you just have to do binary exponentiation and also you have to take care of the mod thing. Right? Because we are outputting the answers from mod value. Right? So I'm not going to explain this. This is a very general thing that uh, you must know what is binary exponentiation. So after we have returned the answer mod some particular value, I can just add it to my answer. So uh, you must be observing that I have taken mod at every operation so that the integer doesn't overflow. And still I was getting overflow and I was getting wrong answer in some cases. So that is why I have taken long long in some cases as well. Right. So after it, you can just return your final answer and this will be the solution of today's problem of the day special digits and i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel it's always free of course and you can always unsubscribe later if you don't find the content interesting so share this channel with your friends and till the next video tops keep coding stay safe bye bye